we are definitely working towards our biggest preserving year ever. We still have a ton of cucumbers coming in, so I am trying to get the most pickles that I possibly can out of these. I've also made some really delicious cucumber relish from the ball book. Um, but these pickles here, I've actually found a way to preserve these and keep them super crispy. I use a um, canning method called low temperature pasteurization where you actually only heat your water bath canner up to 180 degrees and you hold it there for 30 minutes while your cucumbers process into pickles and it keeps them extremely fresh and crisp. We surprisingly still have a lot of kale coming in from the garden, which is awesome. It takes quite a bit of kale um, to dehydrate to create a, a good amount of kale powder. And so what we do is we dehydrate it in our Excalibur dehydrator, and then we simply grind it up in the Vitamix to make a nice powder to add into soups or stews or smoothies or really just wherever I'm feeling like we need a little bit of extra added um, vitamins and minerals. So you'll see here after I throw this in the blender and blend it up that I'm gonna basically end up with hardly anything. So that's why it's important that we have so much coming in because I like to have quarts and quarts full of this powder um, because I just feel like it's a really healthy, nutritious thing to have available for our family. And here you can see that that is all that those dehydrator trays yielded me. That was actually a pretty good harvest of kale there and it really got me Oh goodness, not much at all. <laughs> and here are the last of our beets from the summer garden. We'll have more beets in the fall time, um, but right now it's just really too hot for them. And so what we've done here is just simply dehydrated those as well, and we're gonna grind those up into a powder. Now you have to be a little bit more careful with adding beet powder to your recipes and things because you will get a pretty earthy flavor if you add too much to your recipes, whereas the kale powder, you don't notice that as much. But I find as long as you're just adding a teaspoonful or so to a smoothie or something like that, you're pretty safe with this. Sometimes when I'm feeling kind of just low energy or just not fantastic, or maybe I feel like I'm coming down with something, I will even add some of this powder just to water um, and kind of stir that up and just kind of, you know, chug it down. And it's amazing how good this makes you feel. It just has so many vitamins and nutrients concentrated down into this powder. Um, it's pretty awesome. So far this year, we have brought in three bushels of peaches. Our peach trees lost all their blossoms in a hard freeze late in the season this year. And so we brought in these peaches at a pretty high price because most of the local orchards lost uh, an abundance of their peaches as well. Um, so we did pay a pretty penny for these guys. But here you'll see me, I'm just adding those into some boiling water so that I can slip the skins off really easily. And my plan for these peaches is to make peach jam. I'm also gonna make some peach jelly from the skins. So as I take the skins off of these guys, I'm gonna place them into a separate container and I will boil those peels down. I'll cover them with water and boil them down until I have about seven cups of liquid. And then I'll just sweeten that with some sugar and add some pectin and it makes a delicious jelly. So you can get double the amount of jam or jelly um, that you were planning on getting if you just use those skins as well to make some jelly. So that's a pretty awesome way to stretch these guys. Um, we also made some pie filling with these peaches and we also did some just in a simple syrup that you're gonna see coming up here um, pretty soon. It's really important when you're buying peaches at your local orchards that you make sure that they are free stone. Um, and that basically just means that once you break that peach open and pull it apart, that the pit will separate really easily from the flesh. Otherwise, you end up losing a lot of the flesh onto the pit. When I make my um, peach peel jelly, a lot of people like to include the pit in there because sometimes it does have a little bit of flesh on it. I don't just because um, you know sometimes inside of that pit there can be some some toxic things in there and so I just don't want to take that chance so I just simply use the skins 
our blueberry plants this year did not give us much of a harvest at all. Unfortunately, they were planted in some soil with persistent herbicide last year, and so they have been stunted now for two years in a row. But luckily, I was able to order 30 pounds of frozen blueberries from Azure Standard. Um, they were organic and man they were just beautiful they were flash frozen so each one of the berries was completely separate and so what i'm doing here is just using some vacuum seal bags and i'm just kind of portioning these things out into about three or four cups in each package so that when we want either smoothies or maybe i'm gonna make some blueberry muffins or blueberry pancakes it's really easy just to go grab a bag of these from the freezer um, i just love to kind of have a variety of frozen fruit on hand through the winter and honestly the price of these organic blueberries were cheaper than buying conventional blueberries either fresh or frozen from Walmart. So I was really happy to find that deal on Azure. We tend to get a lot of frozen stuff from them. Um, I've brought in about 30 pounds of frozen strawberries this year. We also did some frozen potatoes just because my potato harvest was not fantastic this year. Um, so I'm just trying to bring those things in to kind of supplement what we have here to get us through the rest of the year and through the winter. And along with preserving all of this food, you will find that your freezers end up filling up fast. So we actually have five freezers. We have our regular refrigerator with a freezer in the house and that really doesn't hold much. We also have a stand-up freezer here that you're seeing on the left side. I think that's about 18 cubic feet. This chest freezer here that I have open right now, that's 18 cubic feet. We have another fridge freezer combo um, that it holds a little bit of food. And then I have another seven cubic foot chest freezer as well. And that's where the kids are going right now. I'm basically giving them all of my frozen vegetables and they're putting all of those in that smaller chest freezer. The stand up freezer that we have is becoming very filled with goat milk. And we also have our venison in that freezer. This 18 cubic foot chest freezer here is where I keep the meat from our pigs. We got over 500 pounds of meat from our pigs this year. And so this one is almost completely full with pork and the other freezer and fridge combo that we have out in the garage is actually going to hold all of our frozen fruit. It just works out a lot better if we can keep everything organized and every type of food sort of has its own home. That way I can send the kids out and they're not having to open you know, seven different freezers to find the right thing uh, because it does get hot in the garage and, you know, I just don't want these freezers working harder than they have to because nobody wants to come out and see that something's not functioning properly or that all your food has thawed out that you've worked so hard to preserve. But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that this gave you a little bit of a glimpse into what we've got going on. Um, some of these days are just really survival mode and we're trying to just get it done as much as we can in this season. We feel that this is probably one of the most important times right now to be preserving as much food as we can. Um, you know, regardless of what's gonna happen in the future, we just want to be prepared.